I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Either way, just go check the printer. I think I left something in the printer. <laughs> Thank you. In my rush to get out of here. Okay. Um, so we have a couple of public announcements. First of all, I think we want to start by congratulating the Tappan Zee Boys High School team. They won. They are the state champions. I'm sorry, boys. Relax down there. I know it's very upsetting. We have some Pearl River players' fathers here who, uh, you know. For the record, it's not upsetting. <laughs> uh, we will get them in and give them certificates and acknowledge them at some point, but I just wanted to acknowledge it because it was a really big deal, so thank you. Okay, uh, we have our public hearing to adopt the Orange Town Comp Plan on April 11, 2023. Uh, we have our Orange Town Shredding event, which is always a, a, a favorite of everyone here on April 15th from 8 to 11.30. is hosted by our wonderful town clerk over here, Rosanna Sfrega, uh, in conjunction with Rockland Green and People to People. So um, you can come by and bring your, well, your documents you needed shredded. Um, Okay, we have uh, some discussion items. Do you want to do the petition for the zone change first? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, we have a petition for zone change uh, for residential property uh, for 175 East Washington Avenue. Rob, do you want to talk about it? Do you want to? Uh, well, just briefly, if you want to come up, the petitioner um, lives uh, on uh, East Washington, and they're in a, a CC zone. It's a residential house in a CC zone. Uh, and they're asking that the lot line be moved, the, the house immediately to their west, and all of the, house, the remaining houses on East Washington are in a residential zone. Theirs is the only one in a CC. Headed back east is CC, but there's another house. But in any event, um, I'll let them discuss the reason that they're asking for it. I think it's because they want to do an expansion, right? Is that correct? Yes. You just want Hi. to say your name. And Hi. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Jessica Chessman, and I, I'm here with my husband, Christopher Chessman. So we would like to do an expansion. We recently just learned that our house was zone CC, and uh, our permit got denied for an expansion. Our, our house was built in 1916. It's a very old house. There's no closet space. Uh, we have a teenager who needs... Uh, to put a desk in her room uh, and uh, of course mornings are very hectic in my house because you have to pull one bin to get to things uh, there's no space in the house it's a very old house 1916 it has never really been remodeled inside so it really um, it needs more space and uh, in order for it to be feasible for our family we need to uh, do this construction and if you can kindly assist I will greatly appreciate it okay um, so just I guess I have questions for Jane more than anything um, well so it sounds like it's non-conforming use right yeah yes um, that's correct so this is another one of those oddities that we have where the zone the actual zone line is in like two properties from the, the actual commercial district. So it's a residential house and always has been, but it's a commercial zone. So when they come in to apply for an expansion, it's technically an expansion of a non-conforming use. So they have to go to the zoning board in order to do it. Would we they ha have to go to the zoning board anyways or no? Um, I don't know if they would need other bulk requirements. requirements. Okay. There are two different things. An expansion of a non-conforming use is a use variance which is much harder to obtain. A bulk variance is, you know, your side yard's too small or your, you know, your rear yard's too small, but in the case of a use variance, that's much harder to obtain. And we have a number, I think there's one on Middletown Road that we did something s similar a couple of years back. Yeah. It's just moving it to the other, literally moving the zone line to the other side of yeah. the property. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't have a problem with doing, doing yeah, zone we, change. It just seems like this. Jane, we did this on Eichner, right? Just seems, The Eichners had the same issue. Yes. yep. We did that about three, four years ago. And we've done some in some commercial zones where the, the actual commercial properties, we had to do one in 303 where one property was split by two zones, so the mm -hmm. line was moved. Marty's Bagel's lot, right? Right. 
Right, and the one, uh, yeah. Bradley is the same. Yep. Bradley yep. Park yep. is the same. So there's some odd, because the zoning map is so, technically so old, there's been adjustments throughout the years to accommodate these oddities. And right. okay. This happens to be one. I got no issue. Either. Yeah, no, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just trying to think like for, that these poor people had to come in here and do this and, as opposed to having something in our code that says it's been yeah. used as residential or something like that. But, I mean, they're here now, so I guess it's irrelevant, but. Right, the only suggestion I made was maybe even and put it on uh, the applicant if they want to check with their neighbor because the neighbor's in the same position. We certainly can't force it. Well, I guess we could force it on the neighbor, but they might not want it. But. Um, I mean, I don't know if the I don't know if the neighbor to the to the to east is interested in doing it as well because you have the uh, facing Middletown is that uh, like flower shop and food yeah, yeah, store, yeah, yeah. Right. and then there's the neighbor's house and then their house. So, uh -huh. you know, it, it, it is. I mean, that's uh, up to the neighbor. Though. Right? No, no, I agree. All, all I'm saying is, while it's here, while it's here, that would. I have no problem with that. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, just. Talk to your neighbors, see if they want to be included in the moving of the line. Okay, and if they don't, because they do have They don't yes. have to. No. They, may not, they may not want to, because right. yeah, they, they might want to be. Yeah. Value. Absolutely. But I, I don't know. you can't yeah. expand on it, though. No, but they can maybe sell it to the commercial zone in right. the future. Right. It's up to them. Right. Yep. Right. They have more options in the first district, so that property actually is right adjacent, adjacent to it. Right. 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 Yep. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck with the teenager. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so just uh, when, so that it seems like the board will accept the petition. We'll take it and schedule a public hearing and you'll, you'll be hearing from us. Okay. okay. Any, Thank you. Any, any, uh, information uh, they'll probably schedule at the next meeting for um, uh, end of April or beginning of May. You might want to contact Jane because there's some paperwork that you're going to need to fill out. So if you want to speak with her. Okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Workshop of agenda items. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Food uh, trucks. Number three is going to be the food trucks, which we're going to be opening our public hearing on. Uh, um, H&A is number seven. Number seven. Okay. We're continuing the... Um, public hearing uh, regarding the H&A uh, property, the IBM Complex Center, uh, and the potential uh, acquisition of the property. Number eight, okay, number nine, nine grant. Uh, number nine is re related to a, a, a grant that we uh, are applying for. So basically, it's uh, the building department. Uh, they received a grant for scanning. Cool. Um, number 10, authorized lot through associate to prepare second floor plan revisions and miscellaneous millwork revisions. So this is the new town hall. There's been some kind of adjustments made along the way, so we have to authorize them to do that. Uh, number 11, authorize the town attorney to sign uh, settlement documents and attach certiorari proceeding with John Palladino. Number 12, certificate of sewer registrations. Number 13, award the bid to Trius uh, Inc. for one new heavy-duty power reversible end loader plow. All right. Those things are expensive. Okay. Uh, number 14, approve the compressed 10-hour uh, week, work week, uh, to the employees of the uh, Orange Town Highway Department from April 10th through October 8th. I think we have another one here for the building department somewhere, but yep. anyway. Number 15 and 16 are related to the um, Homes for Heroes. We are renaming uh, the private uh, right-of-ways. We're giving them names. So um, one is Camp Shanks Drive and one is Pathway of Heroes. Number 17 is granting permission to James Dean uh, to attend uh, a North American Snow Conference. And number 18 is grant permission for Stefan Mono to attend, and that's at no cost, you may know, because they got some kind of scholarship. scholarship. So congratulations <laughs> for that. We'll take it when we can. Uh, number 19, approve a supplement agreement with the Hudson Valley Engineering Associates Association to extend the construction inspection services for the North Middletown Road pedestrian corridor link. So this, I presume, is related to the the North Middletown Road. This is just kind of continue with the the bond that we had. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, number 20, approve the Cornell University Local Roads Program uh, for Peter Blickley. And number 21 is to approve Cornell University Local Roads Program for Christopher Coyle. Those are both um, from the Highway Department. Number 22, approve the intermunicipal agreement with Rockland County for the reimbursement of Criminal Justice Discovery Act. Uh, number 23, uh, adopt Rockland County approved uh, Town of Orange Town zoning map, revised March 2023. You will have it on your desk there. It's just, I guess, mm -hmm. keeping, making sure our zoning map is up to date. Uh, 24, approve the flexible work schedule for uh, the building department for, again, April 10th through October 8th. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have some lend assistance. We're going to combine 26 to 27, which is uh, lend assistance for the Memorial Day Parade and the Tapan Reform Church Parade. And that's it. Okay. Yeah, we can. We can jump to number, because we think it'll be quick. We're going to jump to number seven um, so that we can get... Our friend here out of here on time. Um, okay, so can I get a motion to uh, resume the public hearing? Um, that was up from March 21st to uh, acquisition of uh, the property interest in H and A. Motion, please. Motion. Second. So Brian Donnie, Tom Divini, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Just making yeah. sure. Yes, she got it. You, I'm sorry, we're talking fast here. You got it. Okay. Yes, no, okay. I, I've already been warned to talk slowly, so okay. I'm going to talk slowly. <laughs> but just uh, for the record, uh, David Cooper, partner with the law firm Zarin and Steinmetz, serving as uh, the town's counsel on this matter. Um, we understand that, that the parties are potentially getting close to an agreement, um, and so at, at this time what I would recommend is to give them a, a short window of, of, of more time to potentially execute a, a, a PSA by seeing if there are any comments tonight uh, taking any further comments and public comment and then adjourning to a date certain in, in, the, near, in the near future um, so that if, uh, if there is no agreement or, or there is no more progress, then you can close the hearing and, and move forward with, with the acquisition if, or the, the process itself if necessary. Okay. How much time do you think we should give them? Um, well, your next, I mean, it, would, it needs to be a date certain, so whenever your next meeting. I would say, yeah, yeah do a month. We'll do a month. We'll do a month. You want to give enough okay. time to do something, but not well, too much time to 25th. get lazy about it. 26th. All right, that works. So real quick, I mean, my understanding, again, mm -hmm. is that they've reached agreement but that the court, I guess, with this SL Green has to approve it. So I, I think that's what I'm hoping. That's, that's correct. That, that's our information up to date now. Okay. That, that, that they're right. close. There is a, what we hear is, is an agreement in principle, right. maybe even on paper, but the court needs to, to review it. And, needs to bless it. Bless it. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll give him another month. I, could take I mean, what the heck? It's been, <laughs> it's been like two no, and a half no years. What's another month? No comment. All right. <laughs> okay, okay, very but good. What Dan. I would do is, since, since it is a public hearing, you might want to see if anybody wants to speak. Wants to okay, so is there anybody here who wants to speak on the public hearing? Again, this is regarding the uh, potential. The HNA. HNA property. No, uh, no, seeing no things. Okay, so can I continue. get a motion to continue the hearing to April, to April 25th, 2023? I'll make a motion. What's that? 705. Jerry second. Okay, Jerry second. So, Paul Valentine moved. Jerry Pitari second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, okay. number three. Uh, we got we food can. trucks. We can. Yeah, yeah we can. let's get the okay, food so trucks. Okay, so we're going to jump in I think here. A lot of people so, we're going to move to the food trucks because I have a feeling there may be a few people here to speak about it. Um, okay, can I get a motion to open the public hearing uh, regarding the adoption of a local law regarding legislation of food trucks? Motion? I'll make a motion. Brian, Donnie, you move. Motion. Jerry Bittari, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so you want to talk about it first? Yeah, why, don't, why don't you talk about it first and then we'll... Okay, so this uh, came up as a result of um, the fact that there were uh, no regulations. I'm going to ask Jane to, to come up. Uh, Dennis Michaels... Uh, uh, drafted this uh, proposal, and I certainly tweaked it, and with uh, obviously Jane's uh, Slavin's input. But the reason it came up was because there had been some complaints that uh, food trucks were operating, um, you know, without any regulation at all. Uh, so 
we were trying to come up with something of where they might be permitted, you know, frankly, uh, for the benefit in a way of also food truck operators so they know where and when they can operate uh, for, you know, neighbors and businesses so they can know when and where they're permitted to operate. Uh, again, this is going to be your law, so if you want uh, to allow, you know, further licensing or, or additional times, that's certainly okay. If you want to limit it, that's up to you. But uh, in essence, it would be um, the, the way it's drafted now is they're not permitted as of right in a residential zone, uh, except in limited circumstances, um, and then in certain other zones. But again, it, it's kind of a balance. And as I wrote, <laughs> it reminds me a little bit of some of the other laws that are passed where there's some people who really want some regulation and some people don't want any regulation. So I don't know uh, if there's a, a happy medium that can be reached, but uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Jane Slavin because she really uh, deals with this and, and, you know, when people complain or, or have issues about, you know, food trucks operating. Well, can I just, before you even yeah. start, so just this, you know, started back when I first got in office. We had had complaints from certain businesses. Um, uh, the Association of Towns, of which we are a member of, had put out, you know, articles about it. A lot of municipalities were regulating it. So I engaged with both the town clerk and with Jane Slavin, and basically there we found like a void that they're not real property and so not a building, and so she didn't have jurisdiction over it. And the town clerk was issuing permits, but really didn't have guidelines on on where or when or how or whatever. It was just basically they came in for licenses and were given it. So there was kind of no, you know, again, for lack of a better, no, no regulation for the, the, the trucks either. So, you know, again, this is a first shot. We, we're happy to hear what everybody has to say. I already took a look and I already have some comments myself. Um, so anyway, so why don't we just hear, you know. You summarized it perfectly. We, we were receiving complaints, well, inquiries and complaints uh, as to where can someone operate, whether it be from the food truck operator or from businesses that these food trucks were operating right in front of and felt right. that it was un unfair and it was taking away from their business. <coughs> and this has gone on for a few years now. And yes, I know there's been many municipalities that have adopted very similar laws, and I think that's where uh, you know, Dennis may have uh, started to develop this. Mm -hmm. So we've gone back and forth with it and tried to set some parameters, which are obviously open for some discussion. But the idea was to definitely keep them in uh, more of the commercial zones and not allow a food truck just to you know, park anywhere they want. They can be noisy. They can attract very large crowds. Uh, we have had a few locations in town, which I know that the board's aware of where that has happened. And you know, we want to make sure that they can continue to operate, but the parameters are there so that they're safe, so they have so many you know, uh, tables set up. The generators can only operate at certain times, and this way it benefits everybody, uh, both the purveyor and the local residents and businesses. All right. All right. Okay. So. Well, I did read the first draft, and I'm not comfortable with it at all. I think it's uh, overreach and too much government, and I'm not in support of it in its current form. I have no problem with food trucks going to people's private houses for parties. I don't think they need to draw a plan of where the truck will be and get a signature 10 days before to go give ice cream at my uh, granddaughter's party for three hours. So I think we do need regulations. With that being said, I do think there needs to be a set of regulations. I have no problems with those regulations being given out when they get a permit from the town clerk. But reading this, I mean, we're just putting people out of business. And I, I do not support this in its current form. And I look forward to hearing from the public on what they feel. Right. That's okay. it. Any other questions? I'll... Yeah, no, that's yeah. fine. I mean, like I said, I have already have some, but we'll hear from the public and then we can... Um, Change it from there. Okay, so as far as people signed up, we have uh, AJ Saridio. Uh, Just a reminder, it's th uh, five minutes because it's a public hearing. So. Mm -hmm. I'm AJ Saridio on Gracie's Bulldog Grill Food Truck on 303. I have no problem at all what you guys are saying about regulations for food trucks. Uh, I do have a problem from be being the same thing as Paul saying, being 10 days before I notarize and they plan to be on someone's property. We're there for three hours. We set up for an hour, we serve for two hours, and we're gone. The generator runs for three hours on a, on a 
on someone's property. It's not there, we're not there that long for a private party. Uh, the one thing I do have an issue with on the proposal is uh, 15.5C, I do believe it is, that a maximum number of food trucks can be issued per tax lot is only seasonal permit, which is six months. I run for a year. I have a lease that permits a food truck to be on. It's non-residential commercial area. I have my own power. I do not run a generator on the property. I have my own water. I have my own R bill. I have a water bill. To say that I can only run my business six months out of a year is going into my livelihood. How am I going to pay my rent or my lease for the six months that I'm closed? Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. I'm again, I have no problem with regulations. Mm -hmm. of just pulling, any truck just pulling up in Orange Town and doing something. But Orange Town is one of the only towns around that allow food trucks. And it's very hard for us to actually operate anyway. Uh, being a food truck, we're not like a normal brick and mortar place. Mm. Me, I'm open Monday through Friday, 11 to 6 in the same spot. I do not move, and only on the weekends. So to say again that I can only be open six months, I have an issue with that. That's one of the main issues on here that I have an issue with. I mean, there's other things, obviously. We, we, we're on a lot that's 5,600 square feet. There's 5,000 square feet we fit in that. The food truck is only 202 square feet. We fit in that. All the perimeters are five, mile, five feet, 25 feet. We're all good on all those on the spot that I'm in. And it was a restaurant up to 86. It's been a food truck since 86. It's been a food truck on the property. We have a lease that's a yearly lease that states that we're allowed to be a food truck on 600 Route 303 on that tax lot. So that's, again, that's the only issue I have with this. I mean, obviously, I don't mind being regulated. Most towns or Orange Town, they do that. In Jersey, there's the stuff like that. And that's, what, that's basically really what I have to say, to be honest with you. Only that's the really biggest issue. There's other things in here, but don't need to go into every one. Right. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you AJ. You. Okay, the next one we have is um, Jessica Chessman. No, she was oh, here I'm sorry. for the wrong change. She signed up to the wrong one. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lorenzo DiRocco. Uh, thank you for everything you guys do on the board. I know it's a lot of work. Um, I'm, uh, my family owns the property that Gracie Bulldogs uh, food truck is on. It's been a commercial property for years. All right. I mean, Roxanne, sir, I used to believe, was on there. So anyway, um, as AJ was stating, I do believe one of the things that need to be amended is limiting the amount of time that you put on these permits. You know, he's been there for a year. He meets all the requirements. The property meets the requirements. So I do think that that part of it, as you said before, there are things that need to be tweaked or looked at. And mm -hmm. I do request, you know, he is a tenant. He works very diligently on his business. Uh, and I just feel that that one aspect of it should be really revised okay. and looked at. So. Can I ask you, do you know what that property is zoned by any chance? Uh, zoned, I give you the... Yeah, if you don't, we can find it. I don't uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I believe, oh, well, I mean, I can well, give well, you well, the well, tax well, map. Well, 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 um, it's on 303, I think. Right? Where is it on 303? Yeah, it was well, it's at 600, well, route 303. Oh, by, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 It's a commercial, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure what the zone is exactly, but... Yeah, oh, okay. actually, we can try to look. I have the lot number and all that other... We'll try to look on there. Yeah, no, it's okay. We'll figure it out. Paul's got the zoning map there. Does he have a magnifying glass? Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Susan McWinnie. If you can make that out. This is the food truck. Uh, and Brown. Oh, no. This is. Hi, Susan McWinnie, 66 Sickletown Road. We wanted to thank the board for doing, putting together this ordinance. We think it's, it's got maybe a few flaws here and there. We would like to support food trucks. We think they're a very important part of any community. The one, um, our one concern is that we believe that they should, we know that you changed the ordinance a bit to take them out of the residential areas, but there's still some exceptions that allow them in. So in some residential areas you'll have a school or a fire department, something like that, and sometimes they have festivals. We prefer that food trucks not be in there. We're happy. We would like to see them be able to have, say, a one-day permit to come into somebody's home for a party. I know in the version that I read, you had six months permits and one-day permits. So one-day permits for a food truck to come in for somebody's birthday party, whatever, that seems totally reasonable. We'd like to see a thousand-foot buffer between a food truck and another property because, as was mentioned, they can 
be noisy and problematic, but we do support food trucks, um, and we want to thank the board for putting together and spending the time to put that ordinance together. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Joe Agnello. How are you guys? Good. Um, I'll keep this quick. As far as, you know, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly with Councilman uh, Valentine's statement. Um, I do think this is a bit of an overreach when it comes to government. Um, I also don't think that it's cut and dry from one instance to the next. Main difference between AJ and myself. I'm a caterer first. I have a food truck that I use primarily for events. Um, I used to have it operational, but that's no longer going to be the case. So I'm more parking the truck and going to be going out to events. The, the issue I have with the, uh, the permits, the, the 10 days, notary, all this, that's not real life in our business. A lot of times we'll get a call on a Thursday, hey, are you available this weekend? And if we are, who's going to turn down money because, you know, it's hard to come by. It's not always, we don't always have the benefit of two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Sometimes we do, but it's not always there. And, and the ability to be able to, to or, or the, the, the non-ability to be able to take work because we can't, we don't fit in those parameters and we can't get our, our permit in the time just doesn't seem like the, the right way to go with this. Um, again, there, I, I don't think it's as cut and dry as blanketing this for food trucks because there is different operations for different food trucks when you're dealing with, uh, again, daily sales, versus someone like myself that's more geared towards events. And you know, I know I've done a ton of events for the town where we've brought the truck and, and celebrated great things in, in the, the town. Then you, know, you also have uh, uh, ice cream trucks and the, where does that fall under this and, and how far are we getting into this? Um, there's a couple of things in here. I mean, I read through it and the, I think there's just a, I, I, the, my general, scope on this is that it's it's a little nitpicky regulation is fine and and coming to a a common ground and agreement is is also fine i think that it's my belief that again this is a little bit of an overreach and that we i i'd like to propose that we put together a, a food truck committee and i i think that who better to to put on the committee than the current standing few food truck members that are in this community. Um, to date, we've all done everything by the book, gotten our, our peddler's license. We have our county health inspections annually, uh, you know, fire inspections, whatever it may be. We've, we've followed rule and regulation to this point, and, and we've, we've done nothing to, to show that we're, we're trying to skate around anything, any kind of regulation. I think we're all for it, and I think I speak for all of us when I say that. We're, we're for regulation and working something out here, but I think we'd all like to kind of be involved in what we're talking about. Um, that's that's, right that's basically all I have. Thank okay. you guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jim Linekin. You know, guys, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I'm telling you, between AJ and Hello there, board members, Supervisor Kenny. Um, just a couple things. Uh, you know, I read this thing three, four, five times, um, and you mentioned in town that people, food trucks are setting up in front of businesses. I'm around the community seven days a week, okay? I know what's going on in town. Um, I know the activities are going on in town. I know who's having birthday parties. I know what food trucks are in town. And we've had an incident for the last four years in front of the saloon on St. Patty's Day, okay? That one food truck owned by John, okay? That seems to be the issue when you mentioned the food trucks being in front of businesses. The one food truck that's been there maybe four or five years now, he wasn't there this year, they didn't issue him, issue him a permit. He's the one who's been setting up on St. Patrick's Day. He comes in, sets up his truck, okay? He used to own House of Pizza, and he offers his food service, and he does very well. Now, I know Bridget from the saloon, Kevin from Murdy's, I know they weren't happy, especially last year, okay? Um, they thought he was taking business away, which is true. So I can understand not issuing him a permit because he's in front of a business and he's on a county road. But as far as the three food truck owners here in Orangetown, it's me, AJ, 
from Bull Grace's Bulldog, Joe from NoCo, and a gentleman apparently just recently set up a taco truck at the gas station, okay? Those are the only four food trucks in Orangetown. Now, as far as um, us not wanting regulations, we have a health permit. We have to get a hawker's license from the town of Orangetown, which is $250. Now, does that supersede the new permit that they want to issue us, or do we still have to get a permit and also the hawker's license? Okay, now the Hawker's license is good for 12 for months. For me, you gotta get both. Okay, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just throwing this out there. So the Hawker's license is for 12 months. The permit that they want to issue now is for six months. Now when the six months is up, can we get to renew for another six months right away? Or do we have to wait till the following year? I've been doing this for 18 years. All through New Jersey, Westchester, Orange County. I've never seen anything like this. In New Jersey, the towns are knocking down their door to bring in the food trucks. Not to set up by the businesses, but they bring in business in certain locations. I spoke to some people just in the last couple of days. They read this. They couldn't believe it. This is overreach, overkill. Um, Ten-day notice, it's not realistic. You know, we get calls, uh, for example, um, somebody calls us, um, my food truck just canceled. Are you available tomorrow? Well, how many people? 200 people. Oh, I'll be there. Now, according to this, we've got to give 10-day notice, certified letter, Okay, sketch plan, we lose that business. Now, all the towns I've ever dealt with, all the municipalities, everything goes through the town clerk. We've never had to go through the zoning board, planning board, and, and a code enforcement department, never. In 18 years, everything goes through the, the town clerk, or in some instances, the borough administrator. Um, I could go section by section, but I'm not here to do that. What I'd like to do, and I mentioned this to, um, to Joe from NOCO, Let's form a, since this is a big issue, let's form a food truck committee, okay? Mike Mandela, I'd love to have him on there, okay? Maybe one of the town board members. Sit down with the town attorney, okay, and tweak some of this stuff. Some of the stuff has to be tweaked or else we're gonna be out of business, okay? Now, as far as um, the young lady got up and spoke about residential, okay, and you said that the uh, food trucks can be noisy. Okay, I agree with you. Being at Van Halen's farm, there's one or two food trucks that came up from New York City, okay, and their generators were very loud. I agree with you, okay? But I know the way I operate, I know the way Joe operates, I know the way AJ operates. You don't have that problem, not, not at all. Now, if Van Halen is ever allowed to open up again, I'm sure, and I would agree, move the food trucks inside, put us in the parking lot, get us off the road. I agree with that, okay? Um, you know, we also have to get vetted. When we get a, uh, a uh, Hawker's license here in Orangetown, we have to get a background check. Up until this year, we didn't have to get fingerprinted. But for 18 years, I have to get fingerprinted, okay? If Mrs. Smith calls up a trucking, a tree company coming to cut down her trees, okay, does he have to send a notify letter to the planning board, zoning board, let him know that he's going to be on the property for three days? Uh, for three hours, four hours? Does he have to get vetted also? Should he be licensed? Um, well, it just seems like this is concentrated on food trucks. There's only three food trucks in Orange County. If you want to cap how many permits you give out to food trucks, great idea. But grandfather us in to allow us to have the first dibs, because <laughs> we've been doing it long enough. No, really, we work our asses off, palm in French, okay? It's just the optics, okay, from a Pearl River resident for 43 years, okay? Just the optics right now, I see Van Houten's is closed with the cider, okay? You have the Pro River Chamber of Commerce, the whole board just resigned, stepped down, we have a new board, okay? It's gonna be iffy if they make it or not this year. Okay, okay. Jim, I hate to cut you off, but it's five minutes, and okay. we have other people that wanna speak. Okay, my recommendation, please, can we table this? Well, to it's not gonna be voted on tonight, okay. not 100%. Can we, can we form no. a committee? I mean, Jim, we'll discuss this when yeah, everyone's when everyone's done. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Because we have other people that wanna speak. Uh, Joyce Taub. No, it says food truck. Right, they say food truck. Well, he starts over there. Thank you, um, Joyce Taub, Townline Road. And I'm going to alter my um, written words based on what was, a little bit based on what was said because mine's pretty specific yeah, to RCW. Right, the mic, you put, there you go, see, there you go. Thank you. Talk about RCW, that's the next hearing. No, about the food, food trucks. Food trucks. Okay. Okay. Because um, I've seen those, like the guy's shirt, no-go or however, uh, the back of his shirt, and I've seen it in a, in a wide 
area, no harm, no foul, you, you know, well located. And I uh, just passed a food truck on 303 today, and there was no blocking of traffic, no, you know, no problems. So uh, now back to the, the thoughts of the day before having heard these fellows speak. I'm speaking because I understand the board is considering a public hearing for a change in zoning laws regarding food trucks. Although currently closed, the proposed change was authored by RCW. The proposed food truck law would allow RCW to reopen with few, if any, restrictions. I believe that Orange Town needs laws both allowing for and providing clear guidance for the use of the food trucks. Clearly, there are numerous businesses and locations around our town that could benefit from such a resource. This said, having read through the town's proposed ordinance regarding Orange Town food trucks, I have concerns about the specific aspects of the proposed law and would offer the following comments. In general, food trucks do not belong in a residential neighborhood. However, due to their popularity, exceptions could be made for private party events with a limit of two permits issued per year per, proper, per property or whatever you might decide would be appropriate. In addition, food trucks must serve food as well as beverages. There shouldn't be any trucks serving or selling beverages alone. Our previous experience with RCW's food trucks was not good. The food trucks blocked driveways, caused traffic to back up, blocked drivers' lines of sight. The trucks are large and combined with additional traffic created by RCW's crowds, the trucks added to the difficulty of navigating Sickletown and Orange Town, Orangeburg roads during RCW's operating hours. I don't believe the owners or drivers of these trucks are vetted, all of them are vetted by the town, and I have found them to be reckless in how they maneuver themselves into the very small space allotted to them in the parking area of the farm. One rude owner would not move his truck, which blocked access to the riding barn when I needed to drop off and my granddaughter and drive her up that driveway. I don't think it's unreasonable for me to fear a tragedy in making a tragedy in the making when cars drive 30 miles an hour around that blind turn just short of the farm on Sickletown Road. The town needs to define what it needs by what it means by a limited number of permits, very small numbers of operators, and what defines an adequate location. Size matters. Numbers matter, location matters. This may be a fine business, but it's absolutely in the wrong location. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Um, next I have um, Sharon Van Houten. Hi, good evening. I'm Sharon Van Houten, and I live on Boisvelt Road. First of all, I feel like I'm going to go all over the place because after hearing the food truck guys, I, I want to just say from, the, from my heart and from the get-go that I have always been for food trucks. And AJ, I've been to your food truck. No, Cal, I have, no, no Co, I have ordered from your business on many occasions. And I love your food. I love food trucks. And I think that seeing a food truck in an area for an event or um, a fair or, or, or something of that nature is wonderful and everyone loves that um, environment. I, I think um, being on a board or having a committee would be an amazing thing. And I think there's so much you guys can offer to this town, number one. Number two, you did make a, a point that there's only four or five food truck vendors here in Orange Town. Am I correct? Then where are all the food trucks coming from? They're out of county. So how are they allowed to just come right in with no nothing, with no permits? We don't know where they're from. We don't know who they are. There should be a different level of people who are coming into Orange Town than the, the, own, the, the, the regular food truck guys that are here. It should be a different type of a permit it should be a different, they, they should have to pay something. There should be different consequences or they have to show 
you know, their legality or, or where they're from or whatever. I just don't, I don't think that that would be fair. I don't think it's fair to you guys, I'm sorry. So, um, again, I love food trucks. I'm in favor of the town's efforts to craft a food truck ordinance that works for the food truck operators and the businesses. I don't think it's fair that the food truck operators are, um, or that the businesses are put out by the food trucks that are sitting there illegally on a corner and the town has no right or no say to tell them to move. Um, but I do believe that they belong in a commercial area. They don't belong in a residential neighborhood, except for the fact, yes, I've been to parties where there have been food trucks for a day, not week after week, not night after night. I mean, in a residential area, that's people's homes. That's where we live. That's where we get our peace and quiet from. How is that fair to us in a residential area? You know, Van Houten Farms, many, many years ago, with their taxes, lost their agricultural tax rate because they did not produce enough on their property to be considered agricultural anymore. Many years ago, 15 maybe, maybe more. So they were always considered residential from that point on because they simply did not grow enough on their property to be in an agricultural bracket anymore. So they're not a farm. They're not. They're in a residential area. They are pushing out their residents. And we're concerned, frankly, um, that them getting you know what they want with their food trucks right in our own backyards is going to be a big problem for us. Um, we would consider or would like again a thousand foot buffer in a residential area from a food truck to the next um, to the next home to the next resident, and um, I just think you know. There's a lot more to be said and worked on with this, with this um, ordinance. I think there's a lot of things that have to be ironed out. Um, but again, I am for the food trucks, and I, and I wish them well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's the last person who signed up. Is there somebody who wants to speak that has not? I see a hand in the very back. I think it's Jerry Goggins. Yep. Mm. Hi, Jerry Goggin. I think you know who I am. Um, so I want to say, first of all, I respect all the hardworking people here in food trucks who are trying to earn a living, put food on the table for their own families. Um, Mr. Uh, Servidia, did I get that right? You're located in a commercial corridor. You've got a permanent location. Um, you're surrounded by presumably commercial properties. What could be a problem with that? Right? Um, AJ and Joe, my understanding is you go and service people in their residences. I have no problem with that either. I do think you brought something up, which is that this ordinance, or this, this proposed ordinance, places a huge burden on food truck owners who need to get a permit turned around very quickly. I haven't heard anybody here saying, we don't want to be regulated or, you know, take your hands off our business or anything like that. They're saying, let's have reasonable regulations, and those regulations should not just protect the community, but should protect the food truck owners as well. That's what I believe. I think that you, maybe you could consider putting something in place that would provide for express permit grants or perhaps pre-registration of food vendors so that they would not have to go through a 10-day waiting period in order to get what they need. Now, I also think we should be supporting our local community first. We should not be allowing other food truck vendors in here if these food truck vendors can't earn a living doing what they're doing. And I think it's very important for us to, present, to, to preserve that. Um, I'm glad you're not voting on this tonight because I have a ton of comments and I'm not going to get them all in in five minutes. But there's a few other things I want to say. Um, with regard to residential concerns, I don't think anybody in here has an objection to you're going to somebody's 
wedding anniversary or birthday party or some sort, for graduation, right? And you're going to be there for one day, and you're not planning on going back there for, you know, probably for another year or two. What's the problem with that? I don't think anybody reasonable could have a problem with that, quite honestly. What we're concerned about, what many of us, I think, are concerned about is that this, parts of this law, because of the way it's written, or the proposed law, could be used to sort of slide something in sideways. That's not really the intention of the law, but it's going to be very deleterious to the neighborhood. For example, with a six-month permit under the way the, law, the most recent version of the law that I read was written, and I haven't read the most recent version because I think it was only posted in the last couple of days, um, it seems like you could permanently station a food truck somewhere for six months in a residential zone. And I think there's a lot of people who don't find that acceptable. Now, what we would like to see is a buffer. Susan McWinney mentioned this as well. A reasonable buffer between food trucks and houses or other properties in a residential zone, like 1,000 feet. Obviously, that's something that would be up for discussion. I support the creation of a food truck committee and I'd be very happy to serve on it as well. I'd be very happy to contribute to it because I really do support these people who are just trying to make a living. Um, other things I wanted to say, as you know, you've, you've um, let me just check my notes here. I think another thing that's important here is a level playing field for people, right? You don't want to feel uh, like you, you have a harder deal here because you live here than the people who are able to just drive in and do whatever. I'm sorry, Jerry, could you direct your comments I'm, to the I'm very board? sorry. Yeah. I'm to very the town board, they can hear you. Yeah, I'm there. sorry, I'm Thank sorry, you. okay. Um, I think it's important to have a level playing field here so that um, our local vendors are not operating at a disadvantage versus food trucks that are coming in from outside of the county. Um, Finally, you know, uh, Ms. Slavin raised the issue of traffic and crowds. That's what we've experienced with food trucks at RCW. That's because of where those food trucks are located. I doubt that was the food truck vendor's choice of location, but it was what they were given and what they had to work with. This is why we'd like to see a thousand foot buffer between the food trucks and adjoining properties. And I'm hoping that we could reach, you know, some happy medium, as Mr. McGreeno put it, that would satisfy the needs of the food truck vendors and also protect the residents in residential neighborhoods. Thank you. If I have a food truck come to my house, how do they get a thousand foot buffer? I don't own a thousand foot piece of property. Well, like, I. So then I can't have them. That's true. That's true. That doesn't make sense to me. So maybe we'll have to find a better common ground than a thousand foot buffer. Perhaps so, but we could discuss that, right? Yeah, as I said, I have no objection to somebody showing up once for a birthday party. What I don't want to see is this law turning into, you know, a sideways way to be able to put a food truck on somebody's property in a residential zone for six months or to put it in a place where it's really going to cause problems to the neighbors. Thank you very much. Look forward to working. Anyone else want to speak? Anybody else who hasn't? Yep. On food trucks. And please just say your name, if you don't mind, for the record. This, you can't do six months in a residential area. Oh, I am. My name is uh, Sean Runova, my wife, Marcy. We are the owners of uh, the Coney Express ice cream truck. Not 100% positive that we fall underneath a food truck, whatever it is. But uh, have a definition on this paper, so. <laughs> Exactly, and I, I have some issues with, uh, I guess, Oh, it's all good as have about playing have music. I don't know if anyone ever saw an ice cream truck, but you have to play music. Right. Kids come running out, right. all happy. Mm -hmm. uh, one issue I have, uh, and then the other one is, you want us to get permits going to other locations that you want us to go to. If someone calls, hey, I'm having uh, people over, do you mind driving the ice cream truck? Again, that's minutes, mm -hmm. hours. We're there for 30 minutes mm -hmm. at max at someone's house. Mm -hmm. We could serve up to... And I don't play the music the whole time either because it's really annoying. It's annoying to <laughs> us, yeah. Just to show up and then I turn it off, unless somebody asks. It's just, uh, I don't know. I, some of these rules I think should be looked at, and like they said, a committee put together would probably be a, a great idea, considering half the stuff that's in there it doesn't fall underneath any of us. Like, music is a well-known thing for ice cream mm -hmm. trucks. I know food trucks, NOCO. Phenomenal food, AJ, 
loved your food when you were actually in Pearl River as well as, as, well as your food truck. It, it's just amazing. I think it needs to be overlooked again and uh, brought back to the committee and maybe everyone can speak together. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. If you need ice cream, just give us a call. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else that has not had a chance to speak would like to speak? Okay. I don't see any hands. So, um, you, of course you can. Sure. In your mouth. But it, I think it's, it's not clear by this definition, Paul. No, it is hawk and pebble. They all got to get a hawk and pebble. Right. They do, but the hawk and they keep moving. They're right. They're trucks. different. They are on streets that should be every, they're constantly moving every 50 feet. That's under the I think you'd have to put it in this. Yeah, no, I mean, we'd have I mean, to clear that up. Look, there's a reason we have public hearings, and, and as you could tell, but um, it, that that would probably be more hawk and peddling. But I think you got to clear it up yeah. to to exempt that out of this law. Just right. just to be clear well, for ice cream. Hire an ice cream truck to come to your kid's house. Ice cream serving ice cream would. <laughs> be more of a hawking hawker peddling but I think it would have to be put into the law just to specifically exempt it from because you're not really parking you're just stopping to serve ice cream to individuals that want it you're not setting up shop anywhere really um, so I think that would be full out of the purview of this law at least that's how I would suggest it, it, it be it would be similar to stopping and standing yeah but it, I, 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 I'm always a, a, in favor of just specifically making that clear in that law. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But so again, I think what we need to know is that right now there's no regulations. So, you What's know, that, it can't, you there's no regulations right now. So the concern was that someone could come and park in my neighbor's driveway and set up a food truck and be there for whatever, for how long they wanted, and there's no regulations. So and, we and have to find that happy medium. <laughs> And people could just park in front of existing businesses and sell right. food in, in front of the downtown businesses. That's what I was more concerned about. But it's the first try. I do think we should have a food truck committee, and the residents who, uh, who want to be on it can be on it. But there was a suggestion that we treat out of Orangetown uh, like food trucks differently, that's called discrimination and we'll be in court and be sued and lose our shirts if we try to do that. So the law's gotta be uniform to all vendors. It can't, you can't have one group of laws for people that are outside of Orangetown and one group of laws for the people in Orangetown. It's gotta be uniform and that's why you gotta have regulations because it seems like the, uh, the people who have food trucks in Orangetown are proud about serving food in Orangetown and are, 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 you know, doing the right thing. It's the people outside are the ones that you really want to have regulations for. So this is the first try and, you know, Teresa's office will notify, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, we all said about, I'm not being on the committee, but. It's about anyone who's going to set up shop on like and put two two quarters in a meter and try to to, to sell food there. I you know. I guess my, what I'm saying is, how do you, and this is something that has to be thought of. I don't, I don't expect an answer now. But how do we? How do you impose these regulations on people that can just drive in? Nope. Well, that's that's what we're going to sit down with you guys to figure out. I mean, this is just a start. Right, because like, right. this is the beginning of so, the conversation. So someone would have to call, right? And then they'd yeah. have to check. And in but, two hours, they could probably be gone. But, but at least they're gone and they know you're watching and they know there's regulations, so they may think twice about coming. I back. mean, but if, if Bridget or Kevin Murtaugh or Larry Virgine or anyone else, they have a, they're going to call us like within seconds saying, there's a guy set up in front of my shop on a Friday night serving burgers, you know, you know, that's kind of what I thought the, the impetus of this law was, you know, like, okay. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's how you make, I think they're. So that's why this has to be tweaked, because it did take in. Like a catering, a catering license may be a subset of that, because that's, you know, that would make sense. I used to do off-premise catering when I, from 14 to 20, and we would, you know, get in the van and do parties and what have you. So, again, it's the first step. Uh, and I'm not sure we need a, a permit for every single function. I think we no, could get think, a, a yearly permit with regulations that you have to follow. And if you don't follow those regulations, you lose your permit for the rest of the year. That would be a uh, penalty enough. So it would keep people in check. And it, that's a fair and reasonable response. So. It, it's got to be worked on. Okay. Yeah, the, the, so fa the fact of the matter is, is right now, we can't do anything about anything. So, you know, um, and again, this is where the first step starts. We listen to you, you listen to us, and uh, we go back and work on it. But uh, it, with, without a regulation, we can't do anything. So, uh, and I don't think the people of the town want that. I don't think you want that. So, but thank you for all your input. It was great. Okay, so the question for the board is do you want to just. Um yeah. We have to redo it anyway, yeah, so yeah. I, I think we should just uh, close it and not vote on it and maybe form a committee you and it or yeah. what do you do? revisit it. You close it or you withdraw it or what do you do? I'm sure. I mean, most of you have our emails. You can just email us and tell us you want to be on the committee. Just. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not giving it, if you're not giving a new date, I would close it. And I suggest if anybody wants to have input, that they contact Allison with their name and contact info, and I'll have Dennis Michaels contact. Okay. So we're going to take a motion to close it. Um, to anybody who doesn't have it, you can just email supervisor at orangetown.com. Um, you should probably just send your emails anyway, whether you want to be on the committee or not. We can keep you updated. Uh, and we'll update you on, on as we go. So um, on that note, can I get a motion to close? Motion. Uh, Tom, do we, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, so that takes well, care of. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we have to go back to open the, the regular public comment. Okay. Next time, bring food. <laughs> I did not. He said it too quick. I'm going to have to listen to the medium. He said his name, but I didn't miss it. I know he said it really quick, and I was going to. Okay. Okay, so now we're moving on to the regular public comment session. So can I get a motion to open the public comment portion? Uh, in favor? Aye. Okay, so we have signed up for the public comment. Again, we're back to three minutes now. Is Joyce Taub? Polite by nature and committed to remain so, it's harder to maintain control when the owners of Rockland Cider Works spit vitriol at those community members who, for many good reasons, oppose the operation of a commercial cidery in a residentially zoned neighborhood. In a recent letter posted on various social media platforms as well as in the patch, the author of RCW's letter named specific neighbors and a member of the town administration who oppose their business. This is a business which opened in conflict with local zoning laws and without any building permits or CFOs required for repurposing and construction of several structures on the property. While the author mentions the cidery hours, they do not note that their operation takes place outdoors four days a week during the hours that nearby neighbors would want to enjoy time in their yards. He makes no mention that highway lights are used to light the cidery equipment into the night while the cider is made. He, not, he doesn't mention the illegally installed propane tanks on the side of the barn. There is no mention that RCW is in violation not just of town laws but of fire codes. No mention is made of patrons who when drinking become unpredictable in their behavior 
or that his staff and or patrons have used vulgar hand gestures toward the neighbors and sent harmful emails likely incited by the author's unique perspective. The writer uses the illustration of a nearly empty parking lot to demonstrate a slowdown in business, yet the garden center has historically closed from January through March. Unlike ma many seasonal businesses, Van Houten Farm benefits from the presence of a steady and long-term tenant whose rent payments cover the business's property taxes. Se seasonality is a known component of many businesses for which owners plan. For 70 plus years, Van Houten Farm has been supported by its neighbors. I acknowledge that the cidery is no doubt fun for the patrons. It's like grandparenting. You come for the fun and you go home. However, those Orange Town residents and farm supporters who have lived a lifetime here and now are now being repaid for their support by new owners who show utter disregard for their neighbors' concerns, safety, and well-being. Everyone knows that before building or modifying one's property or business, your first stop is the town. This writer must feel above the law. When an illegal business mounts a campaign of public harassment against those who oppose it and uses its social media platforms to stifle its neighbors' rights to speak for themselves, the appropriate action would not be to legalize its operations, but to shut it down. How would you feel if you were bullied into science? silence? Rhetorical question. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Sharon Van Houten. Hi, I have to apologize. I didn't mean any discrimination. I may have not been as eloquent in what I was trying to get across, but I certainly did not mean to dis dis oh my God, discriminate against anyone. Um, talking about RCW and Van Houten Farms, so I grew up here in Pearl River my whole life, and I built a home on the property that Van Houten Farms and RCW share. I raised my family there. I am heartbroken over the treatment of my family and neighbors by the town, RCW, and its supporters. It's a very um, sticky situation between my family and Van Houten Farms, but we're trying to make it through day by day. Growing up here in a family of firefighters, I have always understood how important building and fire codes are and how violations of these codes can lead to truly horrible events. I also grew up believing that bullying is not an acceptable means of getting what you want and that we all need to follow the law. RCW's recent letter contains a pattern of misleading statements not taking responsibility for their own actions, blaming others for, this, for their misfortune, and misrepresenting a retail nursery and garden center as a farm. While RCW states in their letter, and has stated many times elsewhere, that as just two neighbors log in complaints against them, there are in fact many neighbors who are strenuously object to having their lives interrupted. Home values depleted, and safety compromised by the presence of a bar and live entertainment center located in the residential neighborhood. Sadly, many of these community members will not come forward public, publicly as they have witnessed the increasing of abuse of those who have come forward. Based on my daily interaction with the Van Houten property dating back to 1984, I can say with absolute certainty that the environment created by RCW is entirely different than which existed when it was just a garden center and farm stand. The crowds are far larger, far louder, and unfortunately at times far more aggressive and dismissive than those on even the busiest days of the nursery. To say that the traffic and noise are no different today than they have been for de decades is simply untrue. Um, why, while is not imaginary, um, what is not imaginary is the damage being done by RCW's encouragement of the bullying and the threatening behavior towards its neighbors um, the erosion of the town's laws, the building codes, and the zoning ordinances, and respect for the rights of others to speak out. RCW has bullied, disrespected the town's administration and employees, and created a hostile environment in its efforts to force the legalization of a business 
which is dangerous in its current location and not suited to a residential neighborhood. Um, I want to just say thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Um, that's the last person I've signed up. So does anybody wants to speak that has not, that hasn't had a chance that wants to speak? This is the public portion on anything. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't really. Okay. My name is Tom Reynolds, 65 Sickle Town Road. Thank you for allowing me to address the board. Recently, RCW posted a highly inflammatory letter to the patch and several social media platforms. Now, I've grown up, lived almost my entire life here. I started my own business, which is in the food business, produce, and raised my family. I am completely taken aback by the behavior of those who are encouraging the town to support an illegal business that uses bullying as a survival tactic. RCW's recent letter further encouraged the dangerous attitudes and behavior that many of us living in the proximity of RCW have experienced since the surprise opening in late 2018. Early on, I, uh, my wife and I attempted to speak with the RCW owners regarding a dangerous parking situation occurring on our property as a result of their overflow, need for overflow parking. Rather than working with us to find a solution, we were instructed, just think of it this, uh, think of it this way, it's Jimmy's property, he's having a party. Consider how you might have felt were it your young grandchildren who were being placed in danger when playing in your yard. In the ensuing years, the post made by RCW and a number of the comments left by their supporters have grown more hostile in tone. As a direct neighbor of VHW and RCW and someone who has seen in the, has been in the produce business for their entire adult career, I found it unbelievable when Van Houten's stopped referring to itself as a nursery and garden center, which it is, and began calling itself a farm, which it is not. Van Houten farm is a retail nursery. There is n nothing wrong with that, but it's far, a far cry from being a farm that produces food for people. While many small businesses may own, uh, may own included, my own included, have suffered in the current economy, the difference between the issues experienced by actual farmers and those experienced by a suburban retail nursery and garden center are, are night and day invoking the plight of the American farm and their pleas to support an illegally operating business is just one more attempt at misdirecting our attention from what is actually going on. The, the development of a large bar and entertainment center in the midst of a deeply residential neighborhood. Just as RCW and its supporters have every, night, every right to express their thoughts on the matter of RCW's ex existence, so, all right. You can finish. Go ahead. Finish the, your sentence. The, 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 I'd like to say that they put on Facebook posting that t about tonight's board meeting, and they said, sick them. Like you would tell a dog, sick them. That was to their followers, okay? And I'm going to request that the town increase police presence in our community because I feel there's a lot of hostility building. Thank you. Okay, is, um, I saw another hand, I'm sorry, yeah. Hello, my name is Faith Kuster. I live at 54 Sickletown Road, two doors away from RCW and Van Houten Farms. I have lived here for 25 years and have been a regular patron of the Van Houten Garden Center. I have also been a horse owner at Silver Rock Farms and a special ed PTA president for Pearl River School District. I became certified to teach handicapped horseback riding and ran a program for the children of our school district. I now volunteer for the handicapped riding program at Silver Rock that runs after school and on Saturdays. A major concern of the proposed expansion of the RCW 
is the impact of loud music on the horses in the program. They are all experienced horses, but loud music can trigger, uh, be a trigger for them. It can be, it has been recorded at levels significantly over the permissible town ordinance. I can hear it from my house. A bar and live entertainment center is a safety issue. The amount of people and related parking is significant. Please take the needs of this, this special program into account as part of your decision making. In closing, a recent letter from RCW, individual neighbors were personally attacked. It is very disappointing that a legitimate policy debate is publicly cast as a personal vendetta and further demonstrates the disregard for the laws and norms of civil society by RCW. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else who has not? Thank you, and good evening. In a past career, I was a scuba and rescue diving instructor. In that position, one of the most important things that I learned was that you can see an accident coming from miles before it happens, and that the time to prevent an accident is before it happens. The diver who rushes to the boat and forgets things back at their room, or talks too much before entering the water, the diver with really big eyes, or who fidgets or checks their gear during safety talks, accidents are rarely the result of one bad decision, but rather the culmination of many that go overlooked. You can trace the history of Van Houten Farms through a series of code and building violations that have never been addressed. In the 50s, a garage was built where the president, present farm stand sits. A CFO was obtained. In the 60s, the garage was converted into a farm stand and the required CFO was obtained. Later, an addition was built and another CFO obtained. Processes were followed and all went well. By the late 60s, farming at VHF had largely ceased, and most of the produce sold was not grown there. This was a violation of the Orangetown Code. 50% of what a farm stand sells must be grown on the property. In the early 80s, the farm stand was leased out, the greenhouses were shut down, and the produce sold at the stand was now grown entirely off property. When the lease came up on the stand, Jim Van Houten opened a garden center and nursery. There's nothing wrong with a garden center or a nursery, Garden centers are just not allowed in Orangetown's R80 zoning code. Nurseries are allowed, but retail operations are not in temporary greenhouses according to the New York State Building Code. No one was hurt and no one took issue with the garden center and use of temporary greenhouses as retail spaces. This was a case of small violations accumulating over time. In 2019, Rockland Cider Works opened on the property with no permits, no CFO, no inspections, and in complete disregard for our zoning ordinance, the comfort and safety of their neighbors or the safety of their clients. These are violations at a much larger and greater magnitude. Regardless of claims that all issues have been addressed, they have not. Traffic, parking, security, building safety, noise abatement have all been left as open-ended sentences. Threatening comments have been made by customers and supporters of RCW. I was flipped off by somebody leaving RCW on Sunday while working in my yard. The large greenhouse was closed after warnings over fire code violations resulted in zero behavior changes. Repeated conversations with the city high county highway department to resolve parking issues resulted in no parking signs being installed due to RCW's refusal to comply with any suggestions that were offered. It isn't hard to see that we are headed for a serious accident, whether it is a traffic-related, building safety, or human threats. Legalizing a business does not change its behavior, it codifies it. If we want a farm stand, garden center, and nursery, then perhaps the focus should be on bringing those longtime businesses into compliance. Legalizing the cidery because it is there is to look at an oncoming accident and decide you can't be bothered to stop it. I don't envy the town board's position, but I believe the entire town I'm gonna, I'm gonna will Just find itself in a much worse position. Thank you, Thank you. for your time. Uh, is there anybody else that has not a chance? Didn't you speak already? Did, I'm sorry, I guess not. Did you, okay. I have to keep track myself. Hi there. Hello. 
Um, FYI, first of all, there was another car crash at the corner of Sickletown and Blauvelt on March 11 at 3 p.m. The police were there. Uh, and this underlines the fact that this is most definitely not a road that can handle large volumes of traffic. Two cars were involved in that crash. As you know, RCW has been shut down by order of the court. There has been considerable hostility aroused and incited by some of the postings that have been on social media. Some of the examples of, of this are my wife, Susan McGuinney, received an anonymous and threatening email on her website. While working in the garden, minding her own business at the weekend, she was flipped off by a woman who pulled out from the RCW parking lot. Um, posts on social media include, the neighbors must go, and F, Susan and Jerry, because we were the people who were named. F, Susan and Jerry, and F stands in here for a word that begins with F and ends with CK and isn't food truck. Can you understand why we might think that RCW are not good neighbors and why do we do not think a cidery belongs in our residential neighborhood? Can you understand why we don't want to feel threatened in our own homes? Why would the board want to consider granting extraordinary changes in the zoning laws on behalf of this kind of operation? Surely you don't want to be associated with people like this. Can you really think that this is a positive change for our neighborhood? We all support a cidery in, in Orangetown at an appropriate location. Perhaps the town could look around and find a piece of land that they could lease at a reasonable rate to the cidery and everybody could be happy. When you consider the best thing to do here for the, RCW, for the entire community and not only RCW, I'd like you to consider this. This is a country of laws, right? This is one of the things that separates the United States from a lot of other places around the world. We are a country of laws. We look to the courts to settle disputes. We believe in the rule of law and order. In our, in our Pledge of Allegiance, we say liberty and justice for all. We respectfully request that you allow the current lawsuit to run, its to run its course. If RCW has been wronged, they will be vindicated, and we will have to acknowledge the court's decision. If RCW's expectations are unrealistic, the cidery will be closed. The courts will settle this matter one way or the other in a way that is just and fair. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else that wants to speak that has not had an opportunity to speak? Okay, going once, going twice. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry made a motion to close. You second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Does anybody have anything to say? Okay, I'll say a couple words. Um, I too am the target of some of those social media posts, the blitz that they do, they, um, Cyderworks does. And personally, I'm kind of tired of them portraying themselves as the victims. Um, the other ones that came into town and opened a business in 2018 or 19 and never sought any town approvals never um, just completely disregarded our zoning and planning uh, codes, uh, despite being told that they needed to. They never went to the planning board to deal with issues as parking, lighting, flooding, and every of those other issues that every other business in the town of Orange Town is required to do. Um, and then we told them to stop, that it was illegal, and they told us that they were wrong and they were gonna sue us, and they did. They started a lawsuit, and then the neighbors brought a lawsuit. Um, so, I mean, we find ourselves here um, where they're now posting that the town is not, is dragging their feet on making their use legal. To be very clear, no one is entitled to his own change. There's no right to his own change. Um, they submitted a petition. Uh, the town board has since went and approved to have a planner review it. They know this, yet they're on social media knocking the town that we're dragging our feet on his own change that they're not entitled to as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then they took shots at individual people, both, uh, you know, some, some particular neighbors, me, you know, and I, and I get lots of emails. Most of them are somewhat polite, but some of them are not. I get some, some nasty emails too. Uh, you know, accused of I have an agenda and I want condos and I, I you know, whatever. Um, and I said, my only agenda is to have people to comply with our laws. And we expect it of everybody else, so I don't know why we wouldn't expect it of them. They've already said that 
that we're still wrong. The court's wrong, Jane's wrong, Rob, everyone's wrong, that they're going to appeal it. And that's fine. That is their legal right. So let them appeal it. But at the same time, to be saying that the town's not acting fast enough on their zone change application um, is disingenuous. It really is. Um, and it's, I agree 100% it's a bully tactic. Um, and I, I'm, I'm starting to see that's a bit of a trend with, with how they operate. I will not be bullied. Okay, I will not be bullied. Um, I was elected to do what I think is right, and that's for everybody. Um, and that's for the whole town, with, and, and especially the people who live closest to the property. Um, with that said, I'm keeping an open mind. It's, it's getting harder by the day, but I'm keeping an open mind to see what the planner comes back with. And if anyone goes back and watches any of the meetings, I've been consistent from day one that I would not entertain a zone change application while they continue to operate illegally. And they just continued until the court shut them down. Um, and then suddenly it became imminent. They want it done because they are shut down. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to wait to see what the planner comes back with. Um, I've said from day one, I think it's going to be uh, a compromise that maybe nobody's happy with. Maybe they're not happy with it's not enough. Maybe their neighbors are not happy it's too much, um, if, if any. Um, but they may not want to live with any of the, you know, stipulations that the town board may or may not put on it. But it's a process, and it's going to take time. And, and no amount of social media, email, blitzes is going to change that. Um, we will hear from the planners. If there's a majority of this board that wants to move forward, it gets referred to the planning board, to the Rockland County Planning Board. We get you know, comments back. Then there's a public hearing. So it's going to take time. So going on social media and, and screaming like a child that you're not getting it fast enough and email the town supervisor is not how you do it. Um, and so I apologize that you have to be the subject of, um, you know, the same thing that I'm getting, you know, the subject of, um, but it is a process. And like I said, we're going through it. We're waiting for the planner to come back with a recommendation. It will be public. So you will all be entitled to see it. Um, and then this board will have to decide what they want to do, but that's my take on it. So, um, I, too, have been harassed and bullied, for lack of a better word, by people actually in this audience who called me out repeatedly because my business did a small service call there one time. So I know what it's like to be called out publicly. And it's, it stinks, and it's not the right thing to do. And I, don't, I, I thought they handled that totally wrong. They handled a lot of things wrong. They handled the way they went about getting this construction done, the way they went to get a zone change, suing the town. Um, a lot of the time that lapsed was because of the path that them, their, they and their attorneys decided to take instead of seeking the zone change or the variance that was required. They tried to sue the town. Uh, I don't know. It was just the, a calamity of mistakes, uh, I think, on their part. With that being said, What's the alternative? To shut them down? I mean, do you really think that they're going to survive without Rockland Sideworks or a portion thereof? And if they do, do you think the horse farm is going to stay there? Do you really think that if they sell the property, they're going to somehow keep the horse farm? That's going to be sold too. So I think a compromise is needed. And like Teresa said, it's probably going to be a compromise that no one likes. And if we can come up with a compromise that no one likes, I think we did our job as a town board. Because uh, not everybody's going to be happy, but I do think a compromise is needed. And it, it's, it's going to be a long road, but I support coming to a compromise. Because I don't see the farm surviving without some form of the side works being there. I just don't see it surviving. I mean, that's a big property tax. That's a big nut to handle. We had two farm uh, stands or farm, whatever they call them, farm markets in Pearl River. Neither one of them could make it, and they had no overhead. They had no overhead. There's a big overhead ho uh, holding that farm stand, farm, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, uh, it's always easy to look on the outside and tell other people how successful their business is. I could tell you how hard it is to run a business. And um, I support some kind of compromise. And I'm, uh, I'm anxious to see what the plan has come back with. We may not be able to do it if, if it's all thumbs down. But 
Uh, I do support the farm, and I do support a compromise, and I've been saying that from day one. We should sit down at the table and come to a compromise, but one side was unwilling to do it. Anybody else? No, okay. Jerry, I'll finish. Okay. Okay. So if nobody has anything to say, we're going to move on to our agenda items. I think we're up to nine, if I calculated correctly. Yes. Okay. So this is uh, has to do with the grant for the records management uh, for the building department. Can I get a motion? Motion. To? Brian Donahue, second. Second. Jerry Batari, all in favor? Aye. Uh, number 10, authorize Lothrop Associates to prepare second floor plan revisions and miscellaneous millwork revisions for the new town hall. Motion. An amount of 8,000. No. Second. Moved. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom I. moved it. I, I think Jerry, do a second. Brian, Brian. Brian. Brian and then Tom. And then Tom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Town attorney, number, uh, number 11, authorized the town attorney to sign a settlement documents for a tax certiorari proceeding for John Palladino. Uh, motion? Move. Jerry Batari, second? I'll second. I think Tom, do you have any all in favor? Aye. I know, but it, I think both at the same time. Okay, number 12, approval of 2023 Certificate of Sewer Registration to American Field Services. Move. Brian Donahue. Motion. <laughs> Second. Second. Tom, to Tom, do you have any in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 13, award a bid to the Trius Inc. for a heavy duty power reversible end loader plow. That's a mouthful. Mm. Motion. Motion. Jerry, I know, right? Jerry moved. Second? I'll second. Brian Donio, in favor? Aye. Approved the compressed 10 hour work week for the uh, employees of the Orange Town Highway Department? Motion. Brian? Second? second. Jerry Batari, in favor? Aye. Uh, 15, rename the private right of way to Pathways of Heroes in Japan. This is motion. I'll make a motion. Hold on, time second? Second. Brian Donio, in favor? Aye. And then we have renamed private right away to Camp Shanks Drive in Japan. These are both the uh, Homes for Heroes. Motion? I'll make a motion. Brian Donahue, second? Second. Jerry Batari, in favor? Aye. Uh, 17, grant permission for James Dean to attend the North American Snow Conference in Nebraska. That's a good question. Motion. <laughs> Snow Conference. Second. second. Jerry Batari, all in favor? No. Oh, no, I thought you said Alaska, man. No, Nebraska. Uh, I did. Uh, Brian, Brian Donnie, Brian made it. Nebraska. I thought they said Alaska. Great man. That would have been Grand, impressive. Number 18, grant permission for uh, Stefano to attend the American Snow Conference in I'll, Nebraska. I'll make a motion. Well, I'll right. second. Brian Donnie, all favor. Cold. Aye. Aye. Okay, number 19, approve a supplemental agreement with Hudson Valley Engineering Associates regarding the extended construction inspection services for Middletown Road Project. Mm -hmm. Move. Jerry Batari, second. I'll second it. Will Valentine, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 20, approve Cornell University Local Roads Program, uh, Peter Bickley to attend. Motion. Uh, motion, please. I think it was. Second. Jerry Batari. <laughs> three. J.B. Tari, move. Tom Divini, second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, approve Cornell University uh, Local Road Program, Christopher Coyle, to attend. Motion? Motion. Brian Donahue, second. Jerry Batari, all in favor? Aye. Uh, 22, approve the unit intermunicipal agreement with Rockland County for the reimbursement of Criminal Justice Discovery Act. Move. Jerry Batari, second. I'll second. Brian Donnie, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, number 23, adopt the Rockland County approved town of Armstrong zoning map, which was revised in March of 2023. Move. Tom Divini, move. I'll second. second. Brian Donnie, all in favor? Aye. Approve the flexible work schedule for Office of Building Zoning Planning, Administration, and Enforcement. Uh, from move. Jerry Batari, move. Second. I'll second. Brian Donnie, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, combine and approve items number 25 to 27, which is lend assistance. All right, move. Motion. Tom Divini, second. Second. Right, Jeff, favor. three items. 
I don't want to hear more than three. <laughs> Go to four. I'm not listening. <laughs> I think you can read more. The audit for tonight's meeting consists of two warrants for 2.6 million. First warrant had 53 vouchers for 373,000 and was for utilities. Second warrant had 147 vouchers for 2.2 million items of interest. Uh, number nine, Joe Lombardo, 168,000 for new town hall plumbing. Number 11, Morano Brothers, 154,000 for the North Middletown Road project. Number 12, uh, Department of Civil Service, 958,000 for healthcare. Number 13, SNL Plumbing, 249,000 for new town hall. HVAC and number 18, Vanis Construction, 518,000 for GC work on the new town hall. Any questions on the audit? No, motion to accept the audit. Moved. I'm second. second. Jerry Rattari, all in favor? Aye. Okay, executive session. I know we have some personnel related. Personnel Do we have related. anything else? Possible land sale. Possible land sale? Okay. If you say so. You say so. <laughs> okay. Um, so we are going to go into executive session. We will not be voting when we come out. Um, we do have, unfortunately, a kind of a long list of adjournments, um, some hidden closer to home this night than most. Um, so we have Samuel Coleman, retired Rockland County legislator, New York State Assemblyman, and Rampo Town Justice. We have Sandra Kaladner, resident of Pearl River for over 66 years. We have Robert. Robert Emmett Daly, father of retired Orange Town employee Michael Daly. We have Patrick Joseph H H Hoggy? Hoggy? Anyone? How do you say it? Hoggy. And I'm Irish and I can't even say that. Uh, resident of Blauvelt. Uh, Karen Johns uh, unfortunately just passed away. She was an employee of the town of Orange Town for 36 years and just retired back at the end of uh, 2021. So very sad to see that. And of course, we have. Uh, Mary Moira Riley, uh, Carmel's mom, uh, passed away. So we've had a, a tough week here in the town of Orange Sound. She was resident of Blowbelt and mother to Orange Sound employee, Carmel Riley. So um, on that note, can I get a motion? Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Hey, wake up, wake up. 911, what's your emergency? She's not waking up. 